In the light of recent events, it is high time we discuss the issue of forking, including both its benefits and potentially catastrophic outcomes, including multiple versions of a coin coexisting in parallel and the various network attacks associated with that. In the simplest terms, hard and soft forking describe two separate ways of updating the Core Wallet software when the latest version looks to break compatibility with the previous versions. This, however, is not to be confused with a software fork, where someone takes the original project code and modifies it in order to create a new project of their own, such as Litecoin being a project spin-off of Bitcoin. In order to better understand forking, we first need to know that a node is defined as anyone who possesses a copy of the blockchain, as they will be playing a very important and integral role in these processes. A soft fork is a backwards compatible method of upgrading the core wallet software, and defined as a temporary split in the blockchain that occurs when these new rules are implemented. The original chain contains blocks from non-upgraded nodes, however it will also accept blocks generated by the upgraded nodes. Meanwhile, the forked chain contains blocks only from upgraded nodes, which have chosen to actively support the new rules and the soft fork. As soon as the soft fork is implemented, it is then up to the upgraded nodes to try and reach a clear majority, and the miners to reach a certain percentage of the network hash rate, usually by a certain block number. Otherwise, the soft fork will fail, and the original chain will simply carry on unchanged. However, if a consensus is reached, the new rules are implemented across the network, and any non-upgraded nodes still mining will simply be wasting their time, rehashing old invalid information, both generating and gaining nothing. This in turn leaves the upgraded node's blocks being recognised as the strongest and truest chain of events. In comparison, a hard fork enables a quick and high priority change to the rules that is not backwards compatible, and defined as a permanent divergence in the blockchain that occurs when new rules are implemented. Both the new and old chains run in parallel to each other, but each follows a different set of rules. Because of this, it means users who have chosen to utilise different chains will not be able to send funds to each other, as they will each be using a different version of the same coin that are incompatible with one another. This then also brings up the issue of dual funds, where as soon as the fork happens, every coin in existence gets duplicated. So if you happen to have 100 coins from before the fork, you'll now have 100 on the original chain and 100 on the forked chain, giving you a total of 200 to spend. Of course, they won't be worth the same as each other, and they are not transferable across chains. So the hope is that in the long run, one chain gains a clear majority of users and support. If not, the economy and politics around it can become a real mess, so the hope is that a hard fork will only ever be instigated if absolutely necessary, and it has a clear, overwhelming support from its users. Most of these new features will be implemented via a soft fork due to its safer and less urgent nature. These include things such as Check Sequence Verify or CSV, which allow for coins to be locked and unspendable until a certain given time period, or Segregated Witness, which seeks to fix the malleability of transactions on the network. However, new rules that actually break compatibility must be implemented with a hard fork. These would include things such as methods to prevent serious network abuse, an increase of the block size on the blockchain, or seeking to redistribute funds due to broken code or theft through a centralised method. Furthermore, this then starts to lead on to the question of when a hard fork should actually be taken, the moral and ethical dilemmas behind that decision, who should take it, and under what circumstances. Unfortunately, however, we are not philosophers, and that is another topic for another time. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it or any of our other content, and I will see you next time.